this video, we're going to continue writing proofs about congruent triangles, but this video will focus on congruence proofs using angle angle side and HL or hypotenuse leg. So just a brief recap or going over our different methods for proving triangles congruent. Remember, we can prove triangles congruent by SSS or side side side. SAS or side angle side is the second criteria that could establish that triangles are congruent. ASA or angle side angle makes triangles congruent. AAS or angle angle side will establish the congruency of triangles. Or HL will also establish that triangles are congruent. So these are the five criteria that we're going to be looking to meet if we want to establish that triangles are congruent to one another. All right, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at the givens. We see in the first given that segment QS is perpendicular to segment PR. And just a reminder that that perpendicular symbol means right angles. So if I go to look at the picture, I know that line segments QS and PR intersect in a way that forms right angles. So there's QS, there's PR, they've already marked for us the perpendicular lines or the right angles that are formed where those two line segments intersect. The second given is that segment PQ is congruent to segment RQ. And then the third piece that we notice, if we look, go ahead and look at the picture, remember that we're always looking in the picture for vertical angles, which in this picture there aren't any, and shared sides. And I do see between those two triangles, I see that pair of shared sides, QS, right up the middle. So now that I've marked my diagram with all of the given information, I've looked in the diagram for vertical angles, and I've looked at and marked my diagram for the shared sides. Now I'm all set to go ahead and see which one of these five congruency statements this pair of triangles falls under. Well, there are only two pairs of congruent sides, so I know that this isn't side, side, side. I'm tempted to say this might be side, angle, side, but remember that to be side, angle, side, your angles have to be in between your pairs of sides. So that would be angles one and two, which I don't know for sure are congruent. So this is not side angle side, even though I was tempted to think maybe for a minute. Angle side angle requires two pairs of congruent angles. And when I look at this picture, we only have one pair, the right angle. Angle angle side, like angle side angle, requires two pairs of congruent sides or angles, which we don't have. So hypotenuse leg requires a pair of congruent hypotenuses. Remember the hypotenuse is always the side opposite the right angle. So the hypotenuses in this case are PQ and QR. And the legs in this case would be QS and QS. So I like HL. And again, my pair of congruent hypotenuses, when I go to write my plan or my outline, my hypotenuses are PQ congruent to QR. My legs are QS congruent to itself. And I think about this as HL right triangles. My right triangles are triangle QPS and triangle QRS. This last step is the one that everybody loves to forget about. You must write about right triangles if you're going to use HL. All right, so now that we have our plan in place, let's go ahead and let's get down to business. We have to write about PQ being congruent to RQ. Well, that's the easiest. PQ is congruent to RQ because of the fact that it's given to us that they're congruent. Number one, done in our checklist. Moving along, I have to write about segment QS being congruent to, let me go ahead and make that segment QS. And 
that is the reflexive property. Done. And now I have to go write about these triangles being right triangles. And this is actually where kind of the brunt of the work is going to come from for this particular proof. I knew these triangles were right triangles because of these right angles. And I knew these angles were right angles because of the perpendicular lines. So I'm going to go ahead and start out by talking about segment QS being perpendicular to segment PR. I know that's a true statement because it's given to me to be a true statement. I'm going to go ahead and number these angles 3 and 4. I can't use 1 and 2 because those were already used in the picture. But these perpendicular lines make angles 3 and 4 right angles. And that's because perpendicular lines form or make however you want to say it, but they make right angles. And now you might be tempted to go ahead and say angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, and you wouldn't be wrong, they are congruent, but I don't need any pairs of congruent angles to use HL. I need right triangles. So instead of using those right angles to get congruent angles, I'm going to use those right angles to establish the fact that the triangles are right triangles. So triangle PQS and triangle RQS are right triangles. And that's because any triangle that contains a right angle is a right triangle. And now, in my proof, I've talked about my congruent hypotenuses. I've written about my legs being congruent. I've written about my right triangles. Now I'm all, all set to go ahead and pull all three of those together, the hypotenuses, the legs, the right triangles. I now have enough information to conclude that triangle PQS must be congruent to triangle RQS due to HL right triangles, or HLR if you want to say HLR. Just make sure that you talk about the triangles being right triangles. That's probably the most often or the most frequent misunderstanding with respect to proofs involving uh, HL. All right, moving along. Let's go take a look at the next one. I feel like there's a typo in this problem. Let's go ahead and let's get into it, and if we need to, we'll fix it. Angle P is congruent to angle N. Got it. And then this says M is the midpoint of PN. And that should actually say M is the midpoint of KQ. So if you need to, go ahead right now and on your paper, change that and say N is the midpoint of segment KQ. So segment KQ is that blue segment. The midpoint we know makes two congruent segments. I'm going to mark those. And once I'm done marking my given information, I'm going to look for vertical angles. And this picture does have a pair of vertical angles. I'm going to mark them congruent. I'm going to look for shared sides, of which there aren't any in this particular case. And now I'm all set to go ahead and see which congruency category this falls under. Remember, the only ones in the whole world, side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, or HL. I don't have three pairs of congruent sides, so it can't be the first one. Side angle side requires two pairs of congruent sides, and when I look at this particular diagram, I only see one pair, so that's not going to work. Angle side angle and angle angle side are very similar. They both have two pairs of congruent angles, 
The difference is that for angle side angle, that side is in between the two angles. So looking in this picture, I don't see the side in between the two angles. So we don't have angle side angle. We have angle angle side. HL requires right angles. We don't have anything going on there. We know it's not HL. So as far as our plan or our outline, we know we want to use angle angle side. So I'm going to say our first pair of congruent angles are angles P and N. Our second pair of angles are going to be the vertical angles. I'm going to call those angle one and angle two. You could name them by three letters if you wanted to. And the pair of sides are going to be side KM and side MQ. So those are the three pairs of congruent parts I need to write about in my proof before I can establish the fact that those triangles are congruent to one another. Up until now, I've always written a flow proof. At this point, I'm going to introduce you to a second type of formal proof, which is called a two-column proof. And just like its name would suggest, the two-column proof has two columns. The first column is a column for all of your true statements, and I'm going to title that column Statements. And the other column is for all of the reasons that we know those statements to be true. And for lack of something better, I'm going to title that second column Reasons. So this is just an alternative way of presenting the information that you would otherwise present in the flow proof. If you're writing a two-column proof, you should always number your statements and your corresponding reasons. So I'm going to do for my first statement that angle P is congruent to angle N. And the reason I know that that is a true statement is because it's given to me to be a true statement. So if I'm using my outline, item one is checked off my list. I'm on to item two. Angle one and angle two we know are congruent because they're vertical angles. So I'm going to jump right in there. Angle one is congruent to angle two. And the reason we know that's a true statement is because vertical angles are always congruent. Now that I've written about that pair of congruent angles, I can check that off my list. And the last pair of congruent parts I want to write about are sides KM and MQ. I can't jump right into those in my proof. I knew those were congruent because M is the midpoint, so I need to have a little discussion first about M being the midpoint before I can write about those segments being congruent. So I'm going to start with M being the midpoint of segment KQ. I know that's a true statement. And my favorite reason, it's given that it's a true statement. And now that I know that M is the midpoint of segment KQ, I can go ahead and draw the conclusion that segment KM is congruent to segment MQ. And that's because the midpoint makes two congruent segments. For a two-column proof, I'm going to cite statement three because statement three was the statement where I talked about the midpoint. And at this point, I've written about my first pair of congruent angles. I've written about my second pair of congruent angles. I've written about my pair of congruent sides. So I've now, in my proof, written about everything I need to establish that triangle PMK is congruent to triangle NMQ. And as far as a reason, that reason is angle angle side. And again, I'm going to cite the statements where I talked about the first pair of angles in step one, the second pair of angles in step two, and the last pair of angles in statement four. All right, so this has been a really good video with a lot of really good new information in it. As always, I want you to thank, uh, to thank you for the gift of your time and see what you can do with the Check Your Understanding questions on the next page.